today I want to talk to you about one of the best original slasher films, one of the best movies to come out of the 80s, Friday the 13th. Not the diabolical remake. Ah! The 1980 version, directed by Sean S. Cunningham and with special effects by the God Amongst Men, Tom Savini. What I want to talk about today is the makeup in Friday the 13th. I'm hoping to kind of do a series on my channel where I do almost film reviews, but they're about the makeup in the film. Now, what I love about films of this genre from that era, it's all practical effects. They didn't have CGI, they didn't have other stuff to rely on. If something needed to happen on screen, it had to happen for real. So when Tom Savini was designing the special effects for Friday the 13th, Sean S. Cunningham might have gone up to him and said, hey, I need an arrow to come through a guy's throat. And Tom Savini actually had to sit there and think, right, how do I do that? Another thing that made 80 slashes so great was that none of them had any budget. When you're put in like boundaries creatively, you have to be more creative because you've got more limitations. And then from that, you might find that something way better came from it than if you had all the options in the world because for the smaller the box, the more creative you have to be. So without further ado, let's look at the makeup. <gasps> So the way they did that was they casted the actress's neck and made a rubber appliance of a fake neck that already had a slit in it. There was copper tubing underneath the appliance that would then pump blood through the slit in the throat once the actress actually opened it. So it was already there, but the actress moved her neck and opened it for the blood to pump through. This is the iconic kill of Friday the 13th. I mean, there are many, but this is what it's remembered for. Tom Savini is under that bed. Now, there's a fake body lying on the bed, um, which they actually glue to Kevin Bacon's jaw, so it looks like he's attached. Tom Savini would shove a real arrow through the fake neck um, and you can actually see, as he twists it, he had to do that to make a hole big enough for the blood to squirt through. So blood's then being pumped through tubing up through this fake body, and we've got this glorious shot of Kevin Bacon reacting, and it's his real face. So that was a trick that Tom Savini used a lot back in the day, is to kind of trick the audience's eye by using something real as well as something fake. Um, so you kind of can't distinguish from the two and it, it all just feels real. So again, Tom Savini used the technique of using something real with something fake. Now they actually reshot this because first they tried to use a real axe going into a fake head, but the head just wasn't moving the, you know, the way that it would if a head was hit with an axe. So they scrapped that and they used a shot of a real axe swinging down and then a fake axe on the actress's head. And she actually had to hold up the handle so that it wouldn't like drag the whole prosthetic down off her face. There was actually tubing underneath her hair that would then squirt blood out over the axe that was already attached to her face. A fun fact about this death scene in Friday the 13th is that Tom Savini had to lower the actress down by her butt. So as she was like sinking down against the wall, Tom Savini is just underneath her on the cheeks, just like lowering her down. And this one is so cool, the way that it was done. So let's go through this arrow by arrow. The arrow in Bill's neck is actually the slit throat appliance from the very first death in the movie, Anne. And how they got the arrow in was they basically got a real arrow, snipped off the sharp bit, attached like a wire mesh to the end of the arrow, and then glued that to the actor's throat underneath the uh, neck appliance so it looked like it was poking out. And there was actually black fishing line that held it up 
um, because obviously it, you know it's not that rigid to stick right out it would have drooped down um, so that it had black fishing wire just attached to something holding the arrow up. The arrow in the eye was a metal headband that Tom Savini himself got this like strip of wire and hammered it into the shape of a head so that it could go over the actor's head with the arrow attached to a bit that would come down in front of the eye. So then what they did was put um, like cotton pads over the actor's eye, they applied the headband over the act actor's head with an appliance over the top, um, which they basically slid like, over the arrow and onto the headband and then glued it to its face. And the rest of the arrows on the actor were just the front cut off, wire mesh and then that um, glued to the actor's skin. Now then. <laughs> so they cast the actress's entire head and shoulders and then copied that to make a foam latex appliance. And what they did then was detach the head part from the shoulder parts. So in that shot you've got Tom Savini's best mate crouching down out of shot with fake shoulders on his back with a fake head attached with toothpicks. So then Tom Savini would swing the machete and know exactly where to hit it on the appliance for the head to come flying off. When Mrs. Voorhees' hands come up and they're like kind of like looking for her head, those are actually Teso's hands. And once you know that, you'll never be able to look at that scene the same way because you can literally see the hair on his knuckles. <laughs> So this was sculpted by Tom Savini and then they made two pieces. There was a head piece and then a lower jaw piece that they would attach to the actor. I think he originally had hair but the director, Sean S. Cunningham, uh, gave a note that he wanted Jason to be bald. So those are all the pieces of big makeup in this movie. They're all amazing to look at even now, you know. 40 years later. I love them so much and I love slasher films and I love horror films and I love movie makeup in general so that is why I want to talk about them. Thank you for watching, take care, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!